talk to you guys about pen testing and guides and things to look out for if you guys are interested in the field. So first we're going to start off with what is pen testing? Pen testing is a whole realm of different things. It could start with vulnerability assessment and then go into pen testing or essentially pen testing itself would be simulating a real life attack. So let's say we have an, a bank let's and they hire us. Our pen test would consist of us going in and acting like if we were an attacker trying to steal uh, passwords, classified information, stuff like that. Uh, we're the good guys undercover and trying to figure out any security loopholes that uh, can exist. There are multiple phases of a pen test. Uh, the first phase is pre-engagement where we go to the client. The client tells us the scope, the documentation and rules. And that's very important because if we don't have the rules involved, then uh, the tester himself can get in trouble or Janice in this case could get in trouble if we test things that aren't in the specific scope. The second phase is engagement where we actually start testing. We look around to see what we can break into and if we find anything that goes to post engagement where we write a report of what we found and what can be fixed and how it can be fixed. So let's go over some common attack vectors. Uh, you guys might know of some. Ransomware has gotten very big recently, uh, but these are 10 common attack vectors that we see throughout testing. Software vulnerabilities, compromised credentials, weak passwords, um, and a lot of places, <laughs> funny enough, they, they make their passwords such as like summer 2021, uh, or like winter 2020 based on the season or whatever month it is. Another one, another big one is malicious employees where uh, the employee themselves, if they wanted to quit or they're just mad, they have a lot of access. So we also simulate that as a pen tester. Other things include DDoS attacks where you just send a bunch of data to a server, overloads and everything shuts down. Uh, phishing, which some of you might also have heard about where they send fake emails to try to steal your credentials, misconfigured devices and etc. Aria, can you explain what, can, can you jump back there for a second, explain to uh, everybody what uh, misconfigured devices might be, give an example, and also uh, trust relationships? Yeah, so misconfigured devices could just be that a computer you set up, you set it up incorrectly where, let's say in a specific scenario, a password, uh, typically you'd want it to be 12 characters plus, but the IT admin, they make it seven or eight because they want it to be like a they want to make it easier to log in for everyone that could be misconfigured from the default uh application itself and me as an attacker if i get any uh encrypted password i can crack it so once that's cracked i actually have that person's password and this is a vulnerability because that um it's misconfigured because it's not the default uh sense uh setting for trust relationships, it gets a little bit more complicated, but essentially it it's related to how different uh, nodes in a network might be connected. Um, and if like one user has uh, additional admin privileges versus like a normal default user. So let's say I am a uh, employee at a school and the IT admin by accidentally gives me more access to something that I shouldn't have, that trust relationship is an issue because if I ever, if someone ever steals my credentials and I have access to other computers that I shouldn't have access to, and that's a bad thing. Great, thank you. Out of uh, the 10 most common ones off of the projects that you've done, which one do you think is the biggest problem that shows up the most? So a lot um, software vulnerabilities are definitely a top uh, three because as like an IT admin is it is difficult to stay on top of all vulnerabilities that pop up. It seems like every week there's another uh, something called a zero day where researchers or attackers, they find a vulnerability in a software they put it online. So trying to patch that is difficult. The second one that I personally have seen a lot is weak passwords. I see a lot where passwords are the organization's name. So let's say we have like a, a school called like Mango High School. The password is